Welcome to the Shrine of the Magi, Origins and Significance. We're going to start by having a look at the Feast of the Epiphany from St Peter's Basilica in Rome. Here it is, and you can see what a magnificent ceremony it is. The Feast of the Epiphany that it's celebrating is associated with the Magi travelling from the East to visit the baby Jesus. And it's celebrated every year on January the 6th. The story of the bones and the Magi starts with the Gospel according to St Matthew. St Matthew is writing for a Jewish audience and wants to make it clear that the Christ child is the foretold King of the Jews. And to do that he writes a story with a star in it and wise men from the East. These wise men we've subsequently got to know as the Magi. The wise men travel and meet Herod, where they ask where the baby Jesus may be found. Herod doesn't know. They then travel onwards to actually follow the star and actually find the baby Jesus, where they present gold, frankincense and myrrh presents. Following on from that, the Herod finds out where they went, slaughters all children in Bethlehem under the age of two, but Jesus escapes and, has, and fly, flees into Egypt. So that essentially is the story from St Matthew. And that's where it lies until around the year 300, when a lady called Helena, later Saint Helena, um, becomes the father, the mother of the um, Emperor Constantine. Constantine eventually converts to Christianity but his mother is a devout Christian and clearly believes in the significance of relics. Relics are objects of, of uh, devotion which are the physical remains of either a saint or a religious person. There's nobody more religious than Jesus and she goes out to try and find relics of Jesus. She finds the true cross, she finds nails, she finds blood, she finds robes, she even founds the Church of the Nativity. One of the things that she does find as well are the bones of the Magi. And they're all together and she transports them back, to, or has them transported back to Constantinople, which is the city that her son founded. Because she's into relics, um, there's actually a relic of St Helena herself and you can see her skull to this day in Trier in Germany and uh, you can see the photograph of that here now. So the relics remain in Constantinople for um, about 20 years, something like that, and then Eustorgio um, becomes a bishop in Milan and comes across to talk to the then emperor of Const called Constans and he's rewarded with the relics of the Magi. He has a sarcophagus specially made for the, the re relics of the Magi and transports them back to Milan. On the way there the sarcophagus is so heavy just outside Milan it gets stuck and he founds a basilica there in his name for the, uh, to house the uh, relics of the Magi. So for the next 800 years nothing happens to the relics, they stay in the basilica and are venerated by the local faithful. Throughout this period relics are very important and having relics constitutes a great honour on a basilica or a church and it is a great learner as well because when the faithful turn up to venerate the relics they can be persuaded to part with money and that happens across Europe everywhere. Also in this period there are wars going on all of the time and bishops are not like we see them today they also have 
uh, temporal and spiritual power. So they have armies as well. So you have the uh, archbishops and bishops having armies across Europe. So in 1164, Frederick Barbarossa takes Milan. And as part of help, helping his army along, the Archbishop of Cologne, Reynald von Dassel, has contributed troops and is rewarded by the gift of the relics from Barbarossa. He then transports the relics back to Cologne and he has a reliquary constructed which takes over 60 years to complete from 1164 to 1225. So they've got the reliquary, they've got the bones, now they need a cathedral. So in 1248 they begin to construct the Cathedral of Cologne. It is going to be a massive structure, it's going to be the biggest structure on the planet. In 1322, which is some 80 years after they began, they're able to seal off an area and actually have some services. In 1473, which is 225 years after they started, they conclude the project's too large for them and they pause. Eventually in 1842 they restart the project and by 1880, another 38 years later, it was completed. So by 1880 they, they had a cathedral that was worthy of the relics of the Magi and they moved the relics in. In 1904 they decided to give back some of the relics to Milan and some of the Magi relics are now in Milan as well. So it all went well until the Second World War when the cathedral was badly bombed and there was a lot of work that had to be done in restoration. In 19, by 1948 the restoration was complete and we have a movie of the relics returning to the cathedral. Bearing holy relics that have been kept in Cologne since the Middle Ages, the procession is led by seven cardinals and includes archbishops and bishops from all over Europe. In the hearts of the watching multitude, the ritual of the occasion sets alight a desire that only the church can give. So the relics have stayed in their place since 1948, apart from a major refurbishment which happened in between 1964 and 1971. So join me now in a visual celebration of the relics.
Thanks for watching.